Hello everyone, this is the Peculiar Cavalier here and today I'm starting a new series in my channel where I kind of concentrate and talk about all the civilizations in Age of Empires 2. Kind of like a civilization overview or civilization guide if you are starting out in Age of Empires 2 or you already started out and left it uh, after growing up. So if you want to go back, there are a lot of changes in the game. So I'm kind of talk about all of that. And I know all of you are a fan, but um, if you haven't followed the game for a while, you know, just past few years, there are some news for you. There are 31 civilizations now, <laughs> with a lot of uh, new civilizations added in the expansions. And not just that, but there are a lot of balance changes in the game by adding a new tier of water uh, units in the feudal age and technologies that can be shared with all the civilizations like they get the castle age tech and imperial age tech so stuff like that there's a lot of changes it's all for the better you know it's all enhancement of the game so let's take a look at all of the civilizations not in just not in this one okay don't worry about that but i'll be doing separate ones for every civilizations uh, i'll talk about their pros i'll talk about their cons i'll talk about the map they're good in and I'll talk about their best strategy to use with them and what would you do if you take them in a you know worst case scenario you know the map they are not fitted in but you got them anyway so what you do stuff like that so stick around guys the first civilization is Aztecs let's go so we wanted to talk about the Aztecs First, let's take a look at the history. The Aztecs survived in the time from 1325 to 1521. They were the main people in the Mexico region and they got more powerful as they grew and all their tribes were came under one rule. But they got disturbed by the Spanish inquisitors and the conquistadors who kind of destroyed their culture and they kind of you know destroyed their hierarchy some people turned against their own people and which kind of got into all of a collapse which would be explained in the Aztecs point of view in the uh, campaign mode of the Age of Empires 2 game which I'll be playing pretty soon so before we go into that one this is just a simple you know idea about Aztecs so let's go into their tech tree and look at their stuff what are they great at okay let's do it so this is the tech tree of Aztec civilization and as you can see here I'm gonna talk about there's a lot of changes if you are the old fan of Conqueror's expansion uh, there's a lot of changes you can see here but I'm gonna talk about the basic advantages of the civilizations and then their unique unit and then the unique tags and finally the team bonus and after that I'll take a look at their map strengths what are the tactics that you can use to be honest and then how they you know score on all different types of maps and I'll talk about their individual buildings in their and their strengths so the first thing they talk about is the villagers carry plus five on all boards like food gold wood and stone now why is that important well to be honest with you the villager carrying time and the villagers walking time is the most uh, irritating thing in age of empires 2 uh, so like the cap was stuck 10 so they will be walking you know hitting on each other collapsing the whole economy for you but stx is a little bit breezier than that they carry plus 5 so every time instead of carrying 10 they will carry plus 5 like 15 so each time your villager who's a different civilization carries 10 wood they are carrying 15 wood so obviously you're getting advantage over that so this is an amazing thing the next advantage is I think added in the forgotten empires is the military units created 15% faster obviously it's not as great as gods but gods only get it for infantry but here it's on all across the board like military units so from the units from the castle even created 15 percent faster and now if you combine that with conscription they are obviously like 48 50 percent faster so they are faster than all the other rest of the infantry civilizations that are out there and not just that aztecs are not your typical um, 
just infantry civilization they are monk civilization as well so each tech that you uh, go in uh, the monastery road they get extra hit points hit points is not like your you know they get any additional armor they get additional health or something that's not how it works but it's plus five hit points so they are hard to kill even with your typical counter like scout cavalry or light cavalry they are archers even they are not going to die that easily so they are going to put up a challenge with you so that's the thing and this is uh, the next one is also changed from the original conquest expansion where in there you will get a free loom right from the get go you will get free loom so your villages will be a little bit stronger and survivable but here they kind of took that away and then they gave you extra 50 gold so obviously it's like nullifying the own thing like you can research loom but your gold won't be affected but the problem is the time it takes to research loom your opponent will have a villager extra so you have to be careful about that so these are my uh, impressions on um, you know the infantry or the subtle uh, economical advantages and how about let's say the entire civilization gets a boost for villagers in the from the get-go so that's it but I will show you guys how it all affects in scenarios and then we'll go to the un unique unit and unique text and then we'll finally finish it off a team bonus so let's go so as you can see here I'm a, the town center there is no extra kind of thing there is no loom added to you just from the start so but you get an extra 50 gold so you just do this but it takes time right so in that time your opponent will have a villager ahead of you so that's the thing you have to be keep a look for and as you can see here the villagers have started working on the forage bush and they carry plus five food and plus five food is not that much of a change but again you have to be careful because all your opponents are carrying just 10 and instead of you carrying 10 you carry 15 so for every moment they are not uh, you know colli colliding on each other or they are not walking to the mill and back so pretty much done this is the two things that I mainly covered right now so next we will talk about the military buildings and then we will talk about the so then let's talk about the military building and then afterwards we'll talk about how the monks get 5 extra HP every time they do stuff. So as you can see here, there's a barracks and we can gonna create. So we have created a militia. So let's see how fast he's been created for an abstract barracks. Twelve seconds exactly 12 seconds let's go do another run shall we let's do another test after right now oh. so let's do another run shall we let's just test the uh, exact amount of things is it gonna be 12 seconds or more or less yes exactly 12 seconds for an Aztec barracks so let's see for any other civilization generic ones now this is a Kelts barracks so let's see how fast a militia has been created for a Kelts player so Kelts is also infantry civilization they have their own thing you know where they do their own stuff so it takes 14 seconds no, 15 seconds actually, sorry. So, 12 seconds for an Aztec player and 15 seconds for a Kels player who's predominantly an infantry civilization. So that's pretty much it for the first one guys. I'm going to show you guys how the HP of a monk is being, you know, disturbed by Aztec's uh, civilization. So, let's get it. So as you can see here, I'm creating a monk. So this is an Aztec's monk. And Aztec civilization are considered to be the best monk civilizations just because of the um, effects that you saw. Like the technology tree uh, gives them all the tech. So, first of all, the monk is 30 out of 30 HP with a range of 9 and a monk faith of 100% right now. He doesn't have any armors though, so that doesn't matter. So, let's see what techs are there. Let's research Redemption, okay? Redemption is the coolest tech of them all 
uh, which allows you to convert the seat units so let's see and as you can see from the tech tree they should increase their HP by 5% so let's see if it works go there go there I'm just waiting for the tech to be finished and there you go 35 so let's see fire over and this tech was bugged in the original conquest expansion which should give you speed but it wouldn't give you speed uh, but in the forgotten empires expansion they kind of fixed it they kind of fixed the bug where now your monks are fast so it's also a cool tech so as you can see here when it finishes off there you go 4 HP and he moves faster there you go that's the dream so as you can see go 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 this all four goes will give you like extra 20 HP so like 60 HP the monk would be there and if you go to Imperial Age you will get more techs and your monks will be even more stronger so that's it for the tech trees guys and now let's take a look at their unique unit and how they uh, work against all the other unique units so as you can see here the Jaguar warriors are fighting the Ascarals and the Ascarals are your anti-archer units and they kind of get screwed over by the Jaguar warriors and why is that let's see uh, I had 10 Jaguar warriors fighting 10 Ascarals and as you can see here how much of them survived given the fact they are not fully researched okay they are not researched at all uh, they are just generic elite Jaguar warriors and generic elite skulls and they've given them more to fight as you can see here all 10 of the Jaguar warriors survive and all 10 skulls pretty quickly die I mean they got obliterated so why is the fact let's see let's see Jaguar warriors they are attack bonus get versus infantry so they are good against any type of infantry I mean they are good at champions they are good against harbadiers obviously they are good against any infantry units uh, in the entire game like samurais and just like stuff like that so jaguar warriors are your go to units if you want your units to be uh, defeating infantry so obviously in a gods war aztecs will rule the day simple as that even though you, you cannot bring champions you cannot bring um, ascals into so the next i'm going to talk about is the tech tree and the tech tree is a little bit changed for everyone so you get a castle age tech and you get an imperial age tech and in the castle age tech as you can see here skirmishes have plus one attack and plus one range and skirmishes are not your typical attacking unit they are kind of defensive units and so as you can see here elite skirmishers have plus uh, three attack and five range and it can be increased with all the techs like uh, bra till brazer if you do that I think the attack goes plus 4 and range goes plus 3 I guess plus 3 or plus 4 and uh, so at Atlatl I don't know I'm butchering the name probably Atlatl okay that's cool uh, plus 1 attack which is cool plus 1 range which is important so you are gonna be outranging units like civilizations who are pretty much dominantly uh, archers such as your Mayans or your Ethiopians Vietnamese even but that doesn't matter because the Vietnamese have Imperial skirmishers yes there is Imperial skirmishers which I'll get to later and there is you cannot outrange the Britons Britons are awesome so but obviously you can stand toe to toe with them with this one so but this is not a costly tag obviously it's like just 400 food and and 350 gold so you can get it whenever you want so if you're going uh, it's important because in the late game is going to be thrash wars and so your skirmishers will have the edge over your enemies next is the garland wars infantry have plus four attack plainly plus four attack so already your elite jaguar warriors will have plus 12 attack sorry 12 attack you'll get plus four and there is no half putting in the uh, barracks so for example you get plus one plus one plus two so there's four there so plus four here so 20 attack an elite jaguar warrior can do plus 20 attack against any other infantry he can wreck people 
So to output that, they kind of removed one thing that is pretty important to take on any cavalry civilization. Yes, there is battle elephant as you can see. Calm down. Harbidier. The harbidier has been removed for infantry. Sad for an infantry civilization not to have a harbidier, but they have eagle scouts, eagle warriors. So they are good at raiding, they are fast, they are fearsome. However, the next thing I want to talk about is this one. The team bonus is absolutely amazing. Relics generate plus 33% gold. So in a team game, gold is not that much of a problem because you're going to have trade. But it's not like it's bad. You are going to get it as well. As in when you play 1v1, you'll get it as well. So get all those fire relics as soon as possible. So if you get all the fire relics, you will get extra 33% gold. Uh, it's been theorized, it's been calculated that if you have the all five relics, it's equal to six villagers gathering gold. So you can save on population and you will get more gold than they will ever give you. So pretty cool. So Aztec as a whole, I'm going to give them 8 out of 10 just because they are cool. And there are a lot of strategies that you can do with Aztecs, which I'll show you guys in a minute. Uh, for, for example, just because you have 50 gold, instead of doing loom, you can go with 5 militia instead of 3 when you are doing a drush. What's a drush, you ask? It's a dark cage attack. So instead of uh, going to the, you know, you know if you are on a bad map or if you want to do a castle age, fast castle age, you need to keep your opponent in their own base. So for doing that, you will send on militias. For example, you will send 3 militias. Uh, if you are a generic civilization, but for Aztecs, since they have extra gold, they can do five. So you'll get five militias who can do a little bit of damage. It's not about killing villagers or uh, crippling them. You, you're not going to do that with a militia, obviously in a dark cage, no less. But you can at least keep them in their own, um, you know, town center. You cannot. You, they won't be. They will be scared a little to go out, and you will be forced to. Uh, research loom for them so if they do that you can get a village lead as well so for all the food you lost on the militia you're gaining it by having extra villagers so that's pretty much uh, the strategy that they will go to and why they want to go fast castle because come on look at the monastery they get extra five eight points for every technology there is on the monastery so just go to monks and convert everyone and you can win the game by that way or if you don't want to do that, if you're going to go generic, boring thing, you can build barracks and go infantry. Or if the enemy units are making infantries, then you can build a castle and create jaguar warriors to kill them off. It's all about rock, paper, scissor, And you got to win it. So, I'll show you guys. Now you have five Total militia. Okay, five militia. And you can do loom. 50 gold. There you go. Boom. Bantel wound. Now you can go and harass your opponent. Dark Age Rush. Rush. Simple as that. Now I want to talk about the entire tech tree of the Aztec civilization. Um, building by building. And I want to give them marks for that. Okay. So entire civilization, I'm giving them 9 out of 10 to be honest with you. Uh, they are good at early game. Okay. They can keep you in your toes. They are good at feudal age. Because they can go archers without any trouble of worrying about losing any techs or upgrades in the castle age or imperial age. Okay, then they get they are good at castle age because they can handle infantry pretty easily. They can handle cavalry pretty easily because of the monks. Instead of having harbiders, they can go monks and convert all your knights and use them against you. And they are good at imperial age because they have pretty good siege and the monks will be always strong. And you can go either Arbalest or if they are making heavy infantries, you can easily switch into Jaguar Warriors because you have the uh, infantry backing for you in your civilizations. So that's pretty much it. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the archery range. And as you can see in the archery range, they have pretty much everything. Obviously, they don't get the cavalry archer because they are a Mesoamerican civilization. So they don't get cavalry at all. Uh, so they are pretty much nullified there, but that's good. Hand cannoneers, they don't get hand cannoneers who are tough against infantry. They get extra attack bonus versus infantry. But since you have already Jaguar warriors for covering that up, 
they don't need ant cannoneers and they don't Mesoamerican civilizations didn't use bullets so they have gone but they have abolished so they can go archers till imperial age but there is some disadvantages of going there because you don't get thumb ring as you can see thumb ring gives you extra accuracy okay but they don't have that that's a little bit of an issue but they can go skirmishers if they want in a trash war because they get extra range and extra attack as we saw so they're cool there As you can see here, not just that, if they go archers, they get all the attack and range things, but they don't get the PS armor and armor. So your archers are pretty much weak uh, against, uh, you know, other archers and infantry for some matter even, or cavalry even. But that's why it's cool because they are forcing you, not forcing you, like they are kind of directing you towards going to infantry as their civilization gives bonus for that. So that's pretty much the archers thing. Next, I'm going to talk about the infantry. Now, this one is a new tech. Okay, infantry do more damage versus buildings. Every civilization get this. Okay, this is not tied down to Aztecs. They get everyone get this. So it's a new one I want to talk about. So it's cool. The barracks is pretty open. Okay, you get everything except Harvardiers, which is sad, but uh, it's not something to cry about because pikemen do more damage as well because of the garland war. So they are equivalent to uh, your harbadiers and to generic civilizations harbadiers. Uh, but they're not as strong as gods to be honest with you because they're cheap and they can create quickly. So quantity versus quality comes the fight there. And any time of the day I'll pick quantity over quality. Next is all the text they get squires they get tracking they get tracking gives you plus line of sight squires move them faster and they get all the 15 percent extra for infantry which includes infantry and they get garland walls awesome and next i want to talk about the stable but there is no stable so moving on water maps <sighs> this one is painful for me this is why aztecs don't get 10 out of 10 water if you get water map and if you get to play Aztecs, please quit the game first minute. Just just don't even try. Just don't even try. If it's a land slash water map, then do it. But if it's purely water map, if you lose water control, then bye bye. It's GG. Why would you even try? Because take a look at that. Uh, this is the new uh, feudal age uh, balancing that I want to talk about. The fire galleys, the demolition draft that got added in the feudal age because pretty much in the conquest expansion it was all generic galley fights which was really frustrating. But they have now added uh, fire galleys and demolition draft. So fire galleys beat galleys, galleys beat demolition draft and demolition draft beats fire galleys. Rock, paper, scissor. Simple as that. And the simple, they goes on and on. So like fire ships and fast fire ships. Okay, given the fact they have fast fire ship, it's cool and all, but for any other civilization, for example, if they are against Saracens, they're going to get wrecked, even though they have fast fire ships. Just don't even try. They have shipwright, cool, cool, okay. They are cheap and they build faster. They have dry dock, so their ships move faster. They have careen, okay. They have extra PS armor, but they don't get gallons. No, they don't get gallons. Or they don't get a heavy demo ship. Or they don't get cannon galleons. So, bye-bye water control. So, please don't ever play Aztecs in any water maps. Ever. You'll just get wrecked. You can try and try and try and try and try. But for every 50 ships your opponents have, you need to have 100 ships. Simple as that. So, don't do that. Next, I want to talk about the monastery. Now, this, this is where they power up. So as you can see here, the monk starts with 30 HP. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Into 10. So 50 HP. Though monks will end up with 80 HP. Not just that. For every tech. For example, they can convert siege. They can convert your monks. They can convert your uh, soldiers from afar. They can move faster. They have high faith. They have extra HP. It's insanity, guys. It's insanity. See? 50 more edge point. They get 50% more edge points. Aztecs monks are ridiculous, guys. If you ever fight Aztecs on land, and if they are 
starting to build monastery don't go there don't just call gg right there because you can fight yes you can bring on your for example if you play turks you will get free uh, light cavalry and free uh, hussars so you can go and fight but it's hard because if they reach a critical mass if they reach like 20 monks or 25 monks and they know what they are doing like they know their uh, micro and they like uh, if you have like 10 hussars and then they are like using their monks to convert all your hussars you are done and it's not like Aztecs cannot use your converted cavalry units they can so your units will be fighting against you do you want that and then the castle they don't have hoardings so the castle hit points won't increase uh, but that jaguar warriors which is cool and then they have conscription which is also cool and obviously the siege the siege is what i'm really happy about because they get siege onagers and siege ramps so if they are against uh, for example uh, great civilizations like britons or ethiopians or stuff like that you know archer civilizations to counter all your infantry you can go into siege and you can attack them with siege onagers or even siege ramps for that matter you no know, siege ramps will soak up all the arrows and then your infantry units can catch up to them and kill them all next the blacksmith obviously they have everything uh, which i shown you before uh, so the archers have their own thing except for the archer armor but pretty much after that everything is open wide open obviously they don't get any stable stuff because they don't have cavalry which i can't stress the point next i'm going to talk about their defenses defenses are important for any civilizations to keep your buildings for a little while while you do your research or you keep your building strong enough to hold a position or you are using your defenses to go on the offense and stuff like that so for example when you go for defense you will see here this is the place you need to see for defense obviously they get stone wall they get palace fortified walls and they get watch towers good guard towers but they don't get the keep and they don't get the bombard towers obviously because they are not your typical you know civilization for using that next they don't get masonry that's the saddest part they don't get architecture oh which is really really bad but they don't they get arrow slits uh, which is also a new tech that i want to talk about which increases the attack of the towers instead of using one arrow it uses three arrows or four arrows and stuff like that so it's cool they don't get keep which is sad uh but yeah pretty much they are okay on defenses but you cannot uh, think about like using your uh, how to put this like you cannot just turtle up, you cannot just use walls to contract yourself in a single place and then burst out with units to attack your enemies and win the game. That is probably won't happen with the Aztecs because they have moderate uh, defenses to say the least. So don't try that. Next is the economy, which is also really wide open except for the two man saw, which is eh, not that important because uh, Imperial Age pretty much you will be settled, you will be rich. So. Eh, that doesn't affect that much but crop rotation does crop rotation is really cool so you got to save that way you know even though if your workers are not working that much uh, it's enough to probably keep your farms a little bit refreshed because you have crop rotation because they will survive a little bit longer so uh, economy give them 10 out of 10 because they are strong yes it's off-putting by the two man saw but it's cool because they get crop rotation obviously or 9 out of 10 it's, let's say 9 out of 10 so as a whole i'm going to give them 9 out of 10 guys uh, so if you get they are the kings of arabia for a long time one of the kings of arabia because indians they'll get a wreck you uh, in arabia they are the new meta the new kings of the meta so you got to worry about them but aztec as a whole guys 9 out of 10 archery range is strong infantry barracks is strong they don't have the stable but the siege workshop is strong the monks are pretty ridiculous to be honest with you uh, the dogs is zero so don't even try them on any water map arabia do, go go for it or any other land map go for it but please don't try them on water so that's my final verdict of them so thank you guys for watching this is the peggy Gavli here and next week i'll talk about the next civilization and there are 31 civilizations as i told you i'm not kidding if you want to look here 31 civilizations next week Berbers, the african kingdom civilizations then britons and stuff like that i'll go in order and after this i'll talk about the units how they are effective and stuff like this 
so thank you guys hit that like button if you like this video share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for everything that is gaming and this is the pickle cavalier and you've been an amazing audience i'll see you guys in the next one bye